right, let's look at a few news articles here. Uh, this was pretty interesting. Amazon announced a while ago they were going to have these new stores where you could just dry things and dry things off the shelves and walk out. And they were always kind of unclear. They said there was like an AI and cameras or something to pick it up. Now they're canceling it, and it turns out that it was being done by humans. This happened over and over again. Um, they have some miraculous high-tech solution that really is just people. They were paying thousands of Indians to just watch webcams remotely to try to see what people were buying. So that's a pretty ridiculous way to do it, and they are canceling it. All right. Uh, this sounds much more like it. They're moving towards cash carts. They'll have a scanner embedded in your shopping cart so you can just scan things as you buy, which would seem like a much more logical way. That's essentially just the self-checkout built into the cart. So uh, a report has come out analyzing the Microsoft hack uh, where China got into a whole bunch of email accounts. And what they're finding is that uh, Microsoft had egregious security flaws and they lied over and over again, covering up what happened and giving false accounts of what happened. You may remember this came out, they said there was a crash dump on one of the servers that hadn't been secured, and turned out that was never true. There was no keys, there were no keys in the crash dump, and that was not the source of it. And in fact, they still don't know how they got in. So I don't know how they can say they, they've gotten out. So there's a lot of damning uh, complaints here. And Microsoft is seriously not securing their cloud infrastructure well enough to be used the way it's being used. And the only way this one was ever caught is that one of the government agencies paid for an expensive service so they could see the logs, they could tell they'd been hacked, and Microsoft subsequently offered that log visibility feature free to other government agencies. But I think they've got a lot more work to do to earn back anybody's trust. And this is really important considering how much work is done on cloud services now. It's really a lot. Let me just check for comments in the Twitch. Okay, there are none. All right. So uh, this is kind of interesting. You go to Asian and you interview people, seeing do they choose China or do they prefer rather be partnering with China or the U.S. Um, for the first time, slightly more of them would rather be with China, but it's much better to rather than looking at this aggregate number to look at the country breakdown, and it's very simple. There are quite a few countries where China has provided great help to these countries through the Belt and Road Initiative, and they are grateful, and they favor being partners with China. And there's some countries that the United States has been partners with that favor the United States. That's pretty much it. As the United States moves further and further into isolationism and abandoning our allies, like uh, Israel and Ukraine, um, we're abandoning the world, withdrawing back to our own borders, and just letting China move out and make friends with everybody by offering them help. These nations need help, and we're not providing it. It doesn't look like we're going to be providing it anytime soon. So uh, we are... Uh, basically sitting back and allowing China to become the next world superpower, which it may anyway, but we're not even giving them a fight in that regard, not in the business world, not in the assistance world. So a lot of people have said all along that something is deeply mentally wrong with Trump, but uh, now this psychiatrist says that Trump has in fact deteriorated a lot in just the last couple of years, and he says there's no way he can make it through the next four years without becoming incapable of doing the job due to advanced dementia. So that's interesting, and I guess we'll get to see if it's true. Um, it certainly is shocking how many stupid things Trump is saying, and there's something new, I think, about it. I noticed it myself. I listened to Trump's speeches, and now he just makes up words, garbled sounds that aren't even words. And if, four years ago, he wasn't that bad. He was always pretty, he never cared about the truth, and he would always make up things, but at least he spoke in sentences and such, and now he frequently just makes up strange sounds that aren't even words. So uh, I think that's what leads people to conclude this. I don't know if uh, they're right in the diagnosis, but it certainly is true that Trump seems to be deteriorating pretty fast. Um, so Biden talked to China's um, Prime Minister Xi today and and had a discussion telling him things, and in particular telling him to stop meddling the election. Now, I'm surprised. The evidence is apparently quite strong that China is now meddling in the U.S. elections like the Russians meddle in the U.S. election. But the reason why this puzzles me is the Russians have a very good reason to meddle in the election. If Trump gets in, he will absolutely just let them take Ukraine or anything else. He's always made it clear he's 100 percent Putin's ally. He's basically a, a puppet controlled by Putin. So Putin clearly wants Trump to win. I do not know why China would care. It seems to me like both Biden and Trump are very hostile to China 
and there's no reason to choose between them, so I don't know why they would want to meddle in our election. <laughs> but apparently they're doing so, um, maybe just to create chaos and weaken us, but I, I don't see why they would want to push it one way or the other. Um, so this is a web application firewall. These are devices people buy to protect vulnerable web apps. And um, well, these guys found a cute vulnerability that they can sneak past. Remember the base score, the common vulnerability scoring system, a 9.8, which is almost a 10. That's about as high as the worst kind of vulnerability. And what happens is they made a server with a command injection vulnerability. This is the PHP page. And what it will do is run a operating system command based on a parameter that came from the user. So you can just execute code by sending it up in a web request. And this is what uh, web application firewalls are supposed to prevent. So if you send it a parameter like cat etc password, which is a command line command, it will notice that and get blocked by a rule. This page can't be displayed. So the web application firewall prevents that suspicious data from getting through to the server. But all they had to do was to put in a senseless content encoding header and then a second valid content encoding header. And this is what a lot of these web application firewall bypasses are like. The problem with the web application firewall is it's a separate device and it has to interpret the request. And if it's not, it's not exactly equal to the web server behind it. So apparently in this case, the web application firewall takes the first content encoding and uh, it confuses it and somehow it doesn't examine this any, or aren't properly interpret it. And the second device ignores it and accepts the second one. Uh, this is a fairly common technique um, where you put in a double value of a parameter and some devices take the first one and some take the second one so you can fool security devices. So that's a cute, simple attack and we do a lot of things like that in the uh, uh, web application security class. Uh, I didn't ever heard of these things. They, these balls, you throw them in the fire and they sort of explode and spray water on it and put it out. But now they are, um, the Consumer Product Safety Commission has said get rid of them because they don't work. I can see that. I mean, if this doesn't succeed in one puff in putting it out, that's it. It's all over. It's not like you have a fire extinguisher and you could spray some more on. And apparently it frequently doesn't succeed. So that's a kind of silly idea. Let me check for comments. Aha. Um, yeah, Trump has been going downhill, yeah. Strokes, that sort of thing. Well, yeah, <laughs> see, Biden, Biden uh, stumbles over his words too, but it seems to be better than Trump. But it's, anyway, the, um, they're both pretty old. So Tether is um, one of the linchpins of the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Tether is a uh, cryptocurrency but it's supposed to have one tether equal to one dollar. And they keep claiming that they have enough reserves to back the tether, and there are serious concerns that they do not really have enough reserves. Um, so it's unclear, but it haven't clashed. But now they got a SOC 2 audit. So a SOC 2 audit is not a financial audit. It is a crypto, a cybersecurity audit, showing that you have the usual sort of thing like um, security firewalls, intrusion detection, and so on. and ensure privacy and such, so I guess all that is nice. It's interesting that they did that, but it doesn't address the number one concern about Tether is that they just don't have enough cash reserve to back the deposits that are made, just like a bank. Um, and so the Tesla Cybertruck, apparently, whenever anything goes wrong, it fills this giant screen with a red alert and with text, and it just totally stops and won't drive forward anymore because it detects something's wrong with the steering or something. And people are freaking out. He, this guy, uh, he just gets started driving and it immediately just turns on red alerts like Star Trek and stops on you and everything. And your screen fills with text that you can't possibly read while you're driving. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are complaining about the Cybertruck. Many things irritating them about it. And uh, so, the Digital Service Act took place in Europe, took effect in Europe. Originally, it applied only to the very largest services, but now it applies to almost any online service used by EU citizens. And what it means is you have to have content moderation policies. You have to identify advertising. You have to not profile children to deliver targeted advertising and so on. So this is the European Union stepping up to regulate the um, information economy, where they're spying on everybody and targeting you. And it sounds like a very good idea. We'll see what comes of it. Um, all right, I think that's enough of this.